uh, get started. Again, I want to remind you, please social distance if you're not within your own household. That is very important as we had the public health department, that's one of the rules, and make sure you wear masks. Please stand for the presentation of the colors and pledge allegiance. allegiance to the flag Please keep standing for our prayer, Diana Bird. Okay, next to one of the coxs at the top is Diana. That could have been much more. I have gotten a few of them, and I'm just going to. Eksenasi tama api kita kena tuh semua, kaki tuh cerita ni. Amu kita kena tuh piung sekarang kau yang kita tuh sekarang kita tama kita tuh piang nak cerita kau. Okey ayah bersatu tuh kena tuh bersatu tuh sama kisah kena tuh eks. Kena tuh bersatu tuh sama kisah kau kira amu kisah sekarang kita ane sekarang kita cerita piung sekarang kau kena sekarang kau macam cerita piung. Oh tu kenaan, sepumbu kenaan nak kaya katus, ni pete pisenan, kini tuh tuh kosen nak kaya senan satu senan, kena kaya sepumbu senan kena tapi, ayok tu kenaan, kau mesti tu kenal tu piame, mungkin sepuhce ano, ni tu es, kena kena tak kena senjik katu pun katu es, anda kena ni tu es sama itu apa yo, ayok kaki mat, ni cerita pix, ayok katu kita cuma ikanu, ayok katu resenan satu. Hey, Kato, kas pumotik. Hey, Kato, kas senas itu semua kita pix. Kini kita ini kata mula bersatu tu ke yang tu ke nana nak sih sih koi. Okay, kian. Sukul kukni, Diana. And now we have Pat and Sheldon Armstrong who will sing a song for us. Uh, okay, the song that we're gonna sing is the, the Black Feet uh, Flag song. It's gonna, it's a song that's gonna unite us all, the flags. Not only the Umscot would be gunny flag, but also the American flag. It's a song that's uh, equivalent to the national anthem. So please bear with us as you stand. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Thank you, Pat and Sheldon Armstrong. And you can be seated. On behalf of my friend, Representative Marvin Weatherax Jr., who sponsored this bill and worked with the Indian Caucus who are here today on a bipartisan approach to get this, this monumental flag display done. He's, he can't be here, but his heart is here today, and I'm sure he would love to be here. So thank you, Marvin. You're in our hearts as well. I'll, I'll be really quick, though. I would just like to say this work that has been done was started many, many years ago. Finally today, it will be completed. With the, the leadership of our governor, lieutenant governor, and also the leadership of our Indian caucus, working with their, 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 their bipartisan people that supported them, and all the people who came here before us to lay the foundation so we can be here today to finish off a part of the big solution here. There's still more to be done in terms of what was started in 1991, but it was all done through many, many partnerships. With that being said, I would like to introduce my friend and my colleague, Lieutenant Governor Mike Cooney. there can you hear me okay well thank you all very much and uh, welcome and I know it's cool it's blustery but just imagine what those flags are gonna look like with this blowing in this beautiful wind so you know Montanans thank you Montanans take great pride in showing off our state capital and the campus that it rests on because it's our building the people's building and it belongs to all Montanans but when I first entered the state capitol as a freshman legislator in 1977, it did not reflect the diverse people who call Montana home. Luckily, we had some phenomenal advocates who were determined to change that. In 1991, a bill was first passed with the idea of establishing an American Indian monument and displaying the tribal flags on the state capitol grounds. But that project never came to fruition. During the 2003 legislative session, Representative Jonathan Windyboy modified the bill to erect a monument to Native veterans encircled by eight tribal flags. So it was signed into law by Governor Martz. The project was stalled due to a lack of funding. Over a decade later, during the 2019 legislature, the American Indian Caucus and a bipartisan force of legislators supported House Bill 524, sponsored by Representative Marvin Weatherwax. And I can tell you, and I remember just how excited my friend, Governor Bullock was when he got to sign that bill into law. I've spent an awful lot of time in this building since 1977. And that is why it is such a great honor to join all of you today and bear witness to this historic moment when the flags of eight tribal nations are raised above the state capitol at the same time. That means that instead of two flags, the United States flag and the Montana state flag, there will now be 10 flags flown at equal height per the United States flag code. They are flown that way because these governments are equal to one another. And they share the same goals a better future for their people. It's important we acknowledge that our past carries more pain than missing flags. The United States and the state of Montana have not always fostered a positive relation, relationship with uh, tribal nations. Flying these flags in front of this building, the one that belongs to all of us, is one important step in making amends 
and affirming that we will continue to prioritize government to government relations rooted in equality and justice. I remember, I remember when we restored the inside of the Capitol building. We wanted to know what the original paint colors were in the rotunda. So restoration experts painstakingly removed layer after layer of paint on the walls to find the original colors. Vibrant reds, rich greens, and gold. Creating something new is a bit more difficult than restoration. The Capitol Rotunda restoration took from just 1999 to 2000. But getting to this day took decades of tireless efforts from numerous people who testified to how crucial this monument is for all Montanans. But both processes, finding the original colors and creating this monument, were essential to the state of Montana because this building tells our story through its art and architecture and now that story is a little more complete thanks to this tribal flag plaza. Thank you all again for being here and now it's my great honor to introduce our great governor, my friend, Governor Steve Bullock. Thanks, Lieutenant Governor. Thank all of you for gathering here today as we honor and celebrate the Blackfeet Tribe, the Chippewa Cree Tribe, the Confederate Salish and Kootenai Tribes, the Crow Tribe, the Fort Belknap Tribes, the Fort Peck Tribes, the Little Shell Tribe of Chippewa Indians, and the Northern Cheyenne Tribe. In many ways, flags offer a symbolic statement that of honoring sacrifices made, of commemorating a hard-fought victory, or recognizing our shared values. As governor, I order flags to be lowered to half-staff to recognize an important moment in history, to mourn when tragedy or disaster strikes, or the death of a first responder or a public figure. As governor, I order flags to fly in front of our capital, such as the POW MIA flag, or to recognize significant achievements, most recently doing so on the day that the Little Shell Tribe finally recognized and received its long overdue federal recognition. Perhaps the most significant symbolism is the story told of a flag that flies permanently through rain and snow, through the wind and blazing sun, resilient and hardly tattered, always flying with the same determination and purpose. Today, standing together, we bear witness to another moment of symbolism as we raise the flags of the eight sovereign tribal nations in Montana in front of our state capitol, and we do so permanently. <laughs> the story with it is much like the flag that weathers through any storm. It's a story of adversity and denied opportunities. A story of tirelessness and courage and it's a story of optimism and a story of achievements no Native American in Montana should feel like they ever have to walk through the back door of the Capitol yeah. that seat is right at the table where you have a voice your voice is heard and will continue to be heard this is a state house that belongs to all of Montana's people. This is a state house that honors the indigenous people who first knew the mountains and plains of what we now call Montana. This is a state house where First Nations people can protect their languages, their culture, their traditions, their history, and we won't let anyone take that away. A 
And this is the statehood, state house where we also acknowledge the painful chapters of our joint history. And we strive to do better, always with an eye toward future generations. It has been my distinct honor as governor to build and maintain a strong government to government relationship with the eight tribal nations of Montana. And now, as these flags will fly high, they mark a new beginning. These flags will fly over our state capitol every day, as strong as the foundation that they're built in, that no matter future governors or legislatures, all can see the promise of continuing these government to government relationships. All can see the promise of equality, mutual respect, and reverence for diverse cultures and perspectives that have truly enriched our state. All can see Montana's commitment to move forward together for the benefit of generations that will follow. So thank you again for coming today to the powerful advocates who worked and fought for this day. Let today be a reminder not only of where we are currently, but what we can still become as a state. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Governor Bullock. Now we will get on to raising the flags. The first one will be the Blackfeet Tribe flag. What? Councilman Lauren Monroe Jr. and Pat Sheldon. Commissioner Sidney Fitzpatrick, Attorney General Tim Fox.
can we ask Linda Kinsey to come on over here? Next will be the Fort Belknap, Assiniboine, and Globon tribes. Chairman Gerald Gray and the Little Shell Tribal Council. will be the Chippewa Cree tribe. Councilman Joe DeMontany. the Confederated Salish Kootenai Tribes, yeah. State Representative Shane Morjo, Casey Lozar, and Dana Jackson. You want to come up here and join join this? Oh, sure. 
A four pack of Cinnaboy and Sioux tribes. Can we have the tribal council come on over here? Northern Cheyenne Tribe, Representative Jade Barr. Jade's mother come over here as well. Thank you everybody for coming to this monumental, historic thing. <laughs> <laughs> Safe drive home everybody. <laughs> the color guard will retire the colors everybody. for the retired of the colors. 